Good morning and welcome to SJBC News. Join Pastor Wallace and the St. John's family this Thursday, June 8th at 7.30 p.m. as Pastor will be preaching at Faith Hope Baptist Church in New Brunswick to celebrate the first pastoral anniversary of Reverend Joseph M. Brickhouse Sr. Youth Sunday is just a week away and we have some exciting activities planned for our youth. This Friday, June 9th, Dinner with the Pastor will be held at TGI Fridays, located in the Blue Star Shopping Center at 6 p.m. Please RSVP with Sister Tracy Barnes and or First Lady Carita Wallace by Wednesday, June 7th. On Saturday, June 10th, Youth in the Park at Jerseyland Park from 12 noon until 6 p.m. Join us for an afternoon of good food, games, and fellowship. And then on Sunday, June 11th, will be Youth Sunday. Our youth are preparing to host a service you won't want to miss. Let's all be in attendance to support our youth. For additional details on any of these youth activities, please see Sister Tracy Barnes. The day is almost here as St. John's will celebrate the fifth pastoral anniversary of our pastor, the Reverend Sean T. Wallace Sr. on Sunday, June 11th. The celebratory event will take place at the Galloping Hills Golf Course. For additional information, please see Sister Kim Hood, Sister Gloria Penn Miles, or email us at churchevents.sjbc at gmail.com. We need your help. St. John's and the Omega Psi Phi fraternity will have an American Red Cross blood drive here at the church on Wednesday, June 14th from 3 p.m. until 8 p.m. Please know that your donation will help someone in need. We appreciate your support and we look forward to seeing you. Join Pastor Wallace and the St. John's family for our weekly devotion and prayer call every Wednesday and Sunday morning at 7 a.m. Start your morning with a word from on high and be blessed by prayer. The dialing number is 425-436-6308. Access code 312-522. If you have not signed up to receive email notifications from the church, take a moment to do so and go to our church website at www.stjohnscotchplains.org and sign up today to receive email notifications that will keep you connected with us. The work of St. John's continues because of you. We are extremely thankful for your continued financial support, whether your stewardship is online by simple give, Zelle, Cash App, Giveify, text, mail to the church, or during a drive-by. We are grateful for your giving. If you find that our services have been a blessing to you and you have not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so and click the subscribe button so you receive an alert when new services are posted. Additionally, if you are looking for a church home, do consider St. John's. The doors of the church are open and we welcome you in. As we continue to pray for the sick and the elderly, let us also pray for one another in this difficult time. Here at the Dome, the building has reopened and we look forward to seeing you in person. Have a blessed day. Wonderful thing to wake up and see your faces and be able to share the love of the Lord. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Matter of fact, let's let's go back and uh, sing that song. You put your hands together on one and three. Yeah. 
songwriter said I was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the Lord can I be honest with y'all I'm glad when he said unto us that we can come into God's house one more time amen hey thank God thank God thank God thank God God we're grateful and thankful for this day we thank you even now God that we've been allowed the opportunity to come to your house of worship one more time Thank you, God, how you bless our coming out, our going out, and our coming in. Bless us. Thank you for how you bless us in the field and in the city. Thank you for how you bless us with our uprising and our down sitting. Thank you for how you bless us each and every day of our lives. And so, God, we've come today to give you glory, to give you praise, to give you honor, to lift you up, to magnify you, for you alone are worthy to be praised. Thank you, God, for how you have blessed us. You are worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, you're worthy to be praised. Let everything that have breath praise the praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and the harp. Praise him with the timbrel and the dance. Praise him on the organ. Praise him on the loud sounding cymbal. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord God. You are worthy of our praise. And so we say thank you. Have your way in this place. Move by your spirit we pray in Jesus name. Let every heart say Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading comes from Psalm 121, the 121st number of Psalm. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep you going out and you're coming in. From this time forth and forevermore. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our hymn this morning, The Blood Will Never Lose Its Power.
Good morning and welcome to SJBC News. Join Pastor Wallace and the St. John's family this Thursday, June 8th at 7.30 p.m. as Pastor will be preaching at Faith Hope Baptist Church in New Brunswick to celebrate the first pastoral anniversary of Reverend Joseph M. Brickhow Sr. Youth Sunday is just a week away and we have some exciting activities planned for our youth. This Friday, June 9th, Dinner with the Pastor will be held at TGI Fridays, located in the Blue Star Shopping Center at 6 p.m. Please RSVP with Sister Tracy Barnes and or First Lady Carita Wallace by Wednesday, June 7th. On Saturday, June 10th, Youth in the Park at Jerseyland Park from 12 noon until 6 p.m. Join us for an afternoon of good food, games, and fellowship. And then on Sunday, June 11th, will be Youth Sunday. Our youth are preparing to host a service you won't want to miss. Let's all be in attendance to support our youth. For additional details on any of these youth activities, please see Sister Tracy Barnes. The day is almost here as St. John's will celebrate the fifth pastoral anniversary of our pastor, the Reverend Sean T. Wallace Sr. on Sunday, June 11th. This celebratory event will take place at the Galloping Hills Golf Course. For additional information, please see Sister Kim Hood, Sister Gloria Penn Miles, or email us at churchevents.sjbc at gmail.com. We need your help. St. John's and the Omega Psi Phi Fraternity will have an American Red Cross blood drive here at the church on Wednesday, June 14th from 3 p.m. until 8 p.m. Please know that your donation will help someone in need. We appreciate your support and we look forward to seeing you. Amen. Let the church say amen. Say amen again. Come on, say it like you mean it. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, let me just uh, share with you to please bear all of our announcements in mind. Um, I'd like to take this time to thank everyone for the love and support that was expressed on Friday at the homegoing celebration for Sister Ruby Simmons. Amen. Thank you, one and all. Uh, yesterday, we had our last drive-by, amen, our last drive-by, amen. You can put your hands together. Oh, um, man, I'd just like to take this time to say thank you to all of those who have supported and diligently worked for the past three years in our drive-by, amen, the past three years. Amen. We were able to stay connected. One of the ways we were able to stay connected with the members of St. John's is by way of the drive-by. Um, and so I'd like to thank the deacons and the trustees and the media ministry and Calvin Darling, who was our uh, resident DJ. And very special thank you to Sister Kim Hood and Sister Gloria Penn and Brother Robin Suggs and the entire... Uh, kitchen staff. Um, it's difficult when you start calling out names because you're always bound to miss somebody. Um, so please charge it to my head and not my heart. In fact, this is what we do. Everybody who volunteered during our drive-bys, would you just please stand up so that we can acknowledge you if you're here today. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And those that uh, may not be here, we are so grateful for our ability to be able to provide that service um, for our membership. I'd also like to thank everyone for, <clears throat> excuse me, the gifts that uh, they shared for St. Jude during our revival. Um, I was able to share a gift of $2,500 yesterday uh, with St. Jude uh, Children's Hospital, amen, um, at the, uh, the Night of Hope concert for St. Jude. So thank you Thank you for your gifts. Thank you for your gifts. We were able to do that. This Tuesday, um, this Tuesday is rehearsal for our young people. Come on out. That's at 7 p.m. 7? 7 p.m. on Tuesday. All of our young people, if you can and will, please come and meet here at the church for uh, rehearsal. Then on Thursday, Pastor is preaching at um, Faith Hope Baptist Church on George's Road. Uh, in New Brunswick, New Jersey, and that's at 7.30 p.m. Would love to have you there. Amen. Would you please come and join me as we help celebrate uh, Joseph Brickhouse's first uh, pastoral anniversary. 
Amen. Um, and thank God for that opportunity. Then um, there are some things that are taking place this weekend with our young people. Friday, um, we're taking the young people out to dinner and hang out. Then Saturday, we're going to do some stuff in the park behind the church. Um, and then Sunday, they'll be, uh, they'll be in charge of service on Sunday morning. And then Sunday afternoon, um, those of you that are able to will meet with the pastor at the uh, Gallopin' Hill Golf Course. Amen. As we celebrate that day together. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to say this because I got the mic and um, I'm the pastor. Um, <laughs> Um, I, I want to say uh, to, to Sister Adrian, um, she celebrated a birthday and she had her hula hoop um, uh, thing that she does and I was supposed to be there to surprise her and um, we had the funeral and then after the funeral I tried, it was too late for me to come and then I had to go to my nephew's uh, baccalaureate uh, award ceremony. So Sister Adrian, happy birthday, amen and amen. Amen. And we, we really wanted to come and, and, and to support and to surprise you, but unfortunately, we were unable to do that. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. Are there any visitors in the house? If you're visiting with us here uh, in the house or maybe even on the screen um, with our virtual service, would you just please stand so we can acknowledge you? I just want to acknowledge your presence. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. 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 Thank you again for coming to St. John's and allowing the Lord to lead you to this place. We pray that if you're ever in the area and uh, you desire to be connected with a fellowship, you can certainly come over here to St. John's. We'd love to have you. If you're without a church home, amen, please consider St. John's. For we know that the Lord and the Father draws people where he desires for them to be. Amen. Amen. So again, thank you so much for coming. It is prayer time. It's prayer time. You may desire your prayer. Amen. If if that's you, why don't you stand on your feet, and, and if you desire to, you can make your way to the altar. Amen. Amen. Deacon Chisholm is coming to lead us in our altar call. It is prayer time. We serve a God who's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think according to the power that's at work inside of us. Amen. Amen. He is coming to lead us in prayer at this time. Good morning, church. I will lift up my eyes unto the hill from which cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. Let us pray. Our Lord and our God, it's once again, you have given us an opportunity to come before your house of worship. We come this morning, Lord, with no other name but the name of your son, Jesus the Christ. We come thanking you for all your many blessings. We praise you, O Heavenly Father, for all the things that you have done. We look down to you today, Lord, to ask your tender mercy upon all those that are standing around the altar first of all. We ask that you touch them for whatever their heart desire, whatever their needs are, O Heavenly Father, you have all power. We're not directing you in any way. We just ask Heavenly Father that you touch now, that we know the things that we know that you can do, and that's everything. There is nothing on this earth that you can't do. So we ask you right now to touch them in the mighty name of your son, Jesus. Touch those that are standing around the, the sanctuary this morning, those that have on their heart things that they desire. We ask Heavenly Father that you touch the heart of each and every person let them know in well, good and well that you have all power. Put in their heart and their mind the understanding that if they trust and lean on you, that you will grant all of their wishes in glory. Father God, we ask that you touch those that are in mourning today. Somebody have lost a loved one along the way. We ask that you comfort them because you said that you'll be a father for the fatherless, a mother for the motherless. So we just ask right now, O oh, Heavenly Father, that we touch the sorrowful heart this morning and comfort them as only you can. Amen. Touch now, O oh, Heavenly Father, those that are in the hospitals, those that are at home, those that are under doctor's care in nursing homes. We ask that you, not only them, but we actually touch those that you have placed over them to provide their needs. 
give them the wisdom and knowledge and the comfort and the heart and the patience that it takes to deal with the sick and those that are need comforting. God, them now, oh, Heavenly Father, only you can. Father God, we ask you to touch our children as they are go through the last period of their yearly school education and guide them and bless them as they go to further education. Those that are coming out of school, grant them the jobs and the, the things that they're looking forward to doing in their education. Bless those that are continuing forward, oh Heavenly Father, but continue to bless those that you place over them that they might be able to provide the needs that it takes to go down through this life. But most of all, oh Heavenly Father, we ask that you grant each and every person at the sound of my voice, those that are listening to us online, those that are here in our present, to know that you have all of our needs that we need. But all we have to do is seek your face and pray to your son, Jesus the Christ, and these things you say that it will be granted to us according to your will. So we just ask right now. Father God, we know that you have the power to cure all sickness, heartaches, diabetic high blood pressure, whatever it may be, financial situation, touch right now as only you can. Then, Lord, we ask right now that you look upon our pastor as he come before this congregation today, that you will grant him a word of wisdom and knowledge and a word that will inspire some downhearted soul, that they might be able to get up and say that I give my life to the Lord, and that they might be able to go forward knowing that they have done what you will have them to do. So, Lord, we just ask that as we do it on to this day, that you'll grant each and every one of us the will that you will have us to be, guide us in the way that you have us to go. Most of all, help us today that we might be joyful in this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
free and me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. And with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary, Lord, for you. Hey, Lord. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, tried and true. And with, and with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. To be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. And with, and with thanksgiving, I'll be, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. I'll say it again. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy. To be a sanctuary, pure, pure and holy, tried, tried and true. And with, and with thanksgiving, I'll be, I'll be a living sanctuary, sanctuary for you. Take it up. Oh, Lord, Lord, prepare me, me to be a sanctuary, be a sanctuary <laughs> pure and holy. Right and true, and with, and with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary, sanctuary for you. And I'll say yes again, yes, yes, My is yes, 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 What you want me to be? Make me, 
make me what you want me to be what you want me to be then use me use me where you want me to be what you want me to be use me use me how you want me to be how you want me to be we'll say yeah yeah yes to your will yes to your will sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. And with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary, Lord, for you. May the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thine sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say amen. John's gospel, the gospel as recorded by John, John's gospel, the ninth chapter, beginning with the first verse, John's Gospel, chapter 9, beginning with verse 1. As he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, it was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I want to talk from this thought, God has work for us to do. God has work for us to do. Brothers and sisters, as we continue in our study of the Gospel of John, I wanted to share this text for our consideration. Chapter 9 of John's Gospel is actually a continuation of chapter 8. Chapter 8 ends with the Pharisees and the Jews in the temple taking up stones and wanting to stone Jesus to death because of what Jesus had just got finished telling them. Jesus said to them uh, that before Abraham was, I am. But before the father of the faith was born, I am. Before the originator of the Hebrew nation was even a thought in his parents' head or a gleam in their eyes, Jesus says, I am. Now that's strange talk coming from Jesus. How is it possible that Jesus exists in the present tense before someone who he refers to in the past tense, y'all? Listen closely. Abraham was, but I am. Y'all walk with me. He didn't say that I was before Abraham. He says, I am before Abraham. When Jesus says that I am, what he's really saying is that I am connected with God and I am God. It's the same claim that John, the writer of this gospel, claims from the very beginning of chapter 1, which was, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, 
and the word was God. It's the same thread that is woven throughout this entire gospel. Jesus and the Father are one. Jesus says, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Jesus says, I am in the Father and the Father is in me. And not only are they one, but Jesus is trying to explain to these Jewish leaders that since he is God in flesh, that his existence is before Abraham. Can't be was because if he was, then there's a possibility that he may be no longer. Simply put, only God just exists. Okay, uh, everything else has an origin, but God has no origin. Everything else has an ending, but God has no ending. There's no pre-existence or post-existence when it comes to God. God simply is. God is the joy and the strength of my life. Moves all pain, misery, and strife. He promised to keep us, never to leave us, never ever come short of his word. God is. So when Jesus made that statement, immediately the Jews and the Pharisees got upset because Jesus just equated himself with God. Furthermore, if I can push it just a little bit further, when Jesus says, I am, uh, the Jews recognize that phrase as code language. You, you remember when God told Moses at the burning bush to go down to Egypt and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Moses says, who shall I say sent me? God responded, tell them I am that I am. Uh, he says, tell them that the God who is all things and everything at the same time is the one that's sending you. So that they'll know that I am whatever they need me to be. Uh, and I don't know about anybody else, but I thank God that we serve the I am God. Not, 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 not and I was God. Not and I will be God, but we serve an I am God. Does anybody know about the I am God? I am food when you're hungry. I am water when we're thirsty. I am shelter in the time of storm. I am a battle axe in the time of battle. I am a company keeper. I am a heart fixer. I am a mind regulator. I am a mother to the motherless and a father to the fatherless. I am a friend that sticks closer than a brother. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the door to the sheepfold. I am the good shepherd. I am the chief cornerstone. I am he that was dead but is alive again. I am that I am. I am. I'm God. So these Jewish leaders um, that Jesus was talking to understood the code language that Jesus was using and the reference that Jesus was making. Jesus wasn't an old man in a young man's body. He was God in the flesh. So they picked up stones. Because how in the world can this carpenter's son? How in the world can this baby born to Mary? How could this Jesus be God? And as it is written in the Levitical law, they was about to stone him because anyone who made false claims of being God was sentenced to death by stoning. All right, sisters and brothers, I wondered what it was that led Jesus to pull out his trump card in order to set people straight on who he is. Maybe it was their self-righteous attitudes, their self-absorbed nature that got under Jesus' skin. Maybe it was that they simply didn't recognize who he was and the authority that he has. 
Maybe it was the blind nature of the Jews and their refusal to understand that they were blind. Whatever it was, Jesus had to set them straight. You see, these folks were trying to tell Jesus that because they were children of Abraham, that they by default are automatically the children of God. So Jesus tries to open up their understanding so that they know that evidence of being a child of God is not found in the bloodline. It's found according to our fruit vine. Okay. Um, what, 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 what you I'm saying that he came unto his own. And his own received him not. That's the bloodline. But to as many as would receive him, that's the fruit vine. He gave them power to become the sons and daughters of God. The way that we know that someone is a Christian is not in who they are based on their ancestry. But it's found in what fruit they produce. A Christian is known by the fruit that they bear. And I stopped by to share with somebody today on the scene or on the screen that our production of fruit is required of us. See, a whole lot of people say stuff with their mouths. I'm a Christian. But the proof of Christianity is seen in how we live. I'm in trouble. Um, therefore, being a Christian has nothing to do with what local church we're a member of. Nothing to do with who our mama or daddy is or was. Nothing to do with who your pastor is. My pastor is the Reverend Doctor. I wish I had somebody. Doesn't matter what denomination. We are a part of what association we're affiliated with. But being a Christian has everything to do with the lives that we live. I knew I wasn't going to get no amens on that point. You see, brothers and sisters, it's not how high we jump on Sunday morning. Because there's some folk, they can do some spiritual church acrobatics. But it's how we walk. Every single day of our lives. Beyond saying the sinner's prayer. Beyond walking down the aisle. Beyond being baptized and counting with the believers and being able to take communion. Beyond all that, what does your life say about you? Because if we never get a chance to open up our mouths. And if we never say a word... Could the life that we live speak for us? Could the life we live be the one that someone could emulate? Could the life that we live, are y'all with me here, be one that somebody can follow? Question that we have to consider today, what are the works we've done? Testing. Testing. And what is that work saying about you? <sighs> Sad reality is that if some of us let our work speak for us, there would be dead silence. Because the honest to God truth is that some folks have not been found guilty of working. I, see, I knew I was going to, but this is where we are in... We have lip service, but our work ethics do not move at the pace of our mouths. We talk a good talk, but our walk is suspect. We know what to say, because y'all know we've been in church all our lives, so we know the church phraseology, when to say it, how to say it, at what point to say it. But uh, we're rarely seen doing anything. We run around wanting to flaunt a title, a position. So that we can wield some power, but we're unwilling to put the sweat and tears into the work that it requires. And because we are the church, 
We ought to be more than just a place of traditional visitation. We ought to be more than just a place to come and hear a good word, hear some good singing, pay a little money, and show up every now and then. I, I, I. We, we ought to be more than just a good shout at the service and a good fanning from a nurse or an usher. <laughs> we ought to be more than just a hallelujah good time. We ought to be gathering as believers who have been called out and called on to live committed lives doing the work of the Lord. I, I just... and, and the problem that we see in the text is the same problem that we're confronted with today. Just as the Jews were spiritually blind to the truth, a whole lot of us that claim to be blood-bought, born-again, baptized believers are blind to the truth as well. Can I push it? Thanks be to God for Jesus, who always backs up a spiritual truth with a practical example. All right, uh, so, so that none, not only do we get to hear what truth sounds like, but then we also get to see what truth looks like. Watch this. After the Jews of the temple took up stones to try to kill Jesus, Jesus gave the Jews the slip, passed right through the angry crowd who desired to stone him and end up running into a blind man. He leaves dealing with people who are spiritually blind and ends up having to deal with someone who's naturally blind. I wish I had somebody. It's not by happenstance because this encounter is intentional. We serve a God who reminds us how important it is to show us the practicality of spirituality. I wish I had somebody. See, some folks, they just too deep. Are y'all with me here? And what Jesus does is Jesus says, if it ain't relevant, if it ain't relatable, it can't be spiritual. Because there is a practicality to spirit. I wish I really had time. Spirituality. In other words, he uses a natural object lesson to impart spiritual truth. Okay. Bible says that this man was blind. Uh -huh. He has a condition that rendered him unable to see. Not only that, um, according to the scripture, he was blind since birth, which means that he never saw. Okay. It's one thing to have seen and then lose your sight. It's quite another thing when you've never had the opportunity to see and the first thing that the disciples asked Jesus is who sinned him or his parents watch this they weren't concerned about the man's condition other than who was the cause or what was the reason for it they condemn him and try to disguise it as concern all right y'all y'all Sounds a whole lot like us. We condemn folks and then try to disguise it like we're so concerned. Instead of asking what can be done or how can we help, we want to know what happened and whose fault it was. Jesus, who sinned? Him or his parents? Can I help some disciples today? who may be interested in the story surrounding the facts and not just the facts, that it doesn't matter who sinned. That's, 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 it. I wish I had something deeper than that, but I don't. What really matters is that this blind man is blind and those that are blind need to receive their sight, period. He's blind, watch this, he's always been blind and he could probably use some healing. And here's the question, what can you do about it? 
Because the problem is too many of us want the story behind what's going on and we can't do nothing about it. So what's the use of knowing the story in the first place? People, God, I'm glad that Jesus provides clarity for this blind situation. Jesus says, look, this man was born blind. Now, I, listen, y'all, I'm, I, I read it and reread it and read it. They ask him who, who sinned, him or his mama. And my question was, if he was born blind, how could he have sinned to, oh, God. I mean, did he sin in his mama's belly? Y'all, y'all, come on, y'all, y'all act like y'all didn't read what I read. Did y'all read it? Say, hey, this man was born blind. And they like, well, who sinned, him or his parents? How he gonna sin if he born? Uh, uh, all right, all right. Um, so, so Jesus says, look, this man was born blind. Had nothing to do with him or his parents sinning. The sole purpose for his situation was so the work of God might be manifest through him. All right, y'all, y'all missed the whole reason to shout this morning. Jesus lets us know that some stuff that we go through is not always because we messed up. Nor is it because somebody else messed up. Some stuff happens just so God can work it out. God, y'all, y'all, that's, that's great news because it encourages us to stop always trying to figure it out and learn to let God work it out. We, 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 we get worried trying to figure it out. We get all stressed out trying to figure it out. We stay up all night trying to figure it out. We cut our lives short and we lose valuable years trying to figure it out. Our hair turns gray and falls out trying to figure it out. Our health takes a turn for the worse trying to figure it out. We end up hurting and abusing others trying to figure it out. We even have the tendency to make up stuff. I was y'all, y'all trying to figure it out. You, you know, because you know, we always sit there and say, well, maybe it was. Well, maybe the reason why, um, I wonder if, and we think that God is like us. God does not have a scoreboard saying, yeah, you did. You did. No, no that's, that's what we do. Are y'all with me here? Sometimes we invent stuff trying to figure it out and we compromise God's provision and our witness when we try to figure it out. Oh, but the songwriter put it correctly. That problem that I had, I, I just couldn't seem to solve. I tried and I tried, but I kept getting deeper involved. I turned it on over to Jesus and I stopped worrying about it. I wish I had some folks in here that'll learn to turn it over and stop worrying. Oh, he, he can work it out. I see some stuff in our lives um, is simply there because God wants to work it out. You don't have to take my word for it. Ask Job. He was afflicted so that the works of God might be on display in him. And we ought to decide that instead of always trying to figure stuff out, why don't we just step back, let go, and let God do what it do. He was born blind. So that God could manifest a work in his life. 
And Jesus continues by saying, and that is why I came to earth, because we have work to do. Did y'all see that? Y- 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 did y'all miss? Y'all didn't read past that, did you? Jesus didn't say, I had work to do. Look at your Bible. He said, we uh, have work. God sent me because we have work to do. That's another, that's, that's, we must work the works of him that sent Jesus. You see, the focus of the disciples was backwards. They wanted to analyze how his condition came to be. But Jesus was concerned with putting God's power on display so that man could become what God would have him to be. Listen, y'all, it's not about what we are. It's about what we will be. Oh, please don't. Because people will condemn you at the point of who and what you are. Not understanding that God is up to something and is looking at what you will be. All right, let me get out of here. And I've come to encourage somebody to be more like Jesus because we too have been empowered to do the work that God has for us to do. That's why we're still here because God has work for us to do. That's why we're still on this side of heaven, because God has work for us to do. That's why we're encouraged to participate in ministry, because God has work for us to do. That's why God saved us, because he's got work for us to do. That's why God gave us a testimony, because we've got work to do. That's why God picked us up and turned us around and placed our feet on a solid ground because God has got work for us to do. God hasn't brought us this far just to sit down on us and let us fall into everything. But he brought us because he's got somewhere to take us. And until we understand that we were born and saved, we were set apart and redeemed, we were sealed and given the Holy Ghost uh, to be workers in the vineyard, uh, then we're just as bad as the blind Pharisees who though they were not physically blind, uh, they were spiritually blind. Uh, I love the contrast here. Uh, You see, the Pharisees uh, were spiritually blind. Uh, They had the ability uh, to do something about their condition but they refused to. So because they refused to do anything, Jesus left them just like they were. But then Jesus runs up on a blind man who couldn't do anything about his condition. But he wants something done. And so Jesus does something about it. He says we must work. That means we've got no choice. We are inclined. We ought to be compelled. We should be persuaded, convinced, and constrained. In other words, we can't help it. We can't deny it. We can't resist it. We can't even fight it. A charge to keep we have. A God to glorify. Who gave his son our soul to save. And fit it for the sky. To serve this present age. Our calling to fulfill. May it all our powers engage. To do our master's will. My sisters and brothers. God still has work for us to do and we must work the works of him that sent us God wants to do something through us God wants to perform something through us God wants some jobs accomplished through us God wants some resolution through us God wants to turn things around through us God wants to correct some things through us and if we could stop worrying about the details stop worrying about who messed
messed up. Stop worrying of who got us in this mess. Who dropped the ball? Who changed the focus? Whose fault it is? Why did they do that? And learn to avail ourselves. Then God will use us for his glory to accomplish his will. We must learn. Lord, I'm available to you. My heart, I give to you. I do what you say do. Use me, Lord, to show someone the way and enable me to say my story is empty and I, I, I'm available to you. God has got work for us to do and Jesus lets us know the urgency of our assignment. He says the night is coming when no man can work. We need to be putting our time into working. Not because I asked you. Not because a leader asked you. Not because you want a title. Not because you want a decision. But put your time in for the master. Because night is coming. We all are going through something. See devastation all around. Night is coming with all that we're dealing with, with our government. Night is coming with more and more people leaving the church, abandoning organized religion. Night is coming when people no longer have a moral compass. Night is coming. There's still homelessness, still unemployment, still hunger, still people need food, still people need clothes, still miseducation, still misrepresentation. And guess what? The night is coming when churches no longer have pastors in the pulpit and are closing their doors. Souls are being lost. The night is coming. And I don't know about anybody else, but I don't want the night to sneak up on me and leave me with my work undone. I may never do a lot of things I think I should do, but while I'm here, I want to be able to help somebody along the way. While I'm here, I want to be able to introduce somebody to Jesus. While I'm here, I want to be a witness for the Lord. Because if I, if you, if we could just reach out and touch somebody, along the way then our living will not be in vain we must work the works of him that sent Jesus because the night is coming you, you, you do know the night is coming you don't take my word for it keep on living we had people with us yesterday that ain't here today. Night is coming. Somebody still needs to know that God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God has work for us to do. Somebody still needs to hear on a hill far away Reverend why every sermon you preach do you come back to the cross because the cross is the centrality of the gospel no cross no crown no cross no everlasting life no cross no salvation that means you done lived in hell on earth 
and you're going to go and live in hell. God still has work for us to do. Because people still need to know that uh, there's no secret what God can do. What he's done for others. Can I tell you the amazing thing to me? The amazing thing to me is that we so sold out for God but won't share God with anyone around us. Testing, one, two, one, two, one, two, three. It's amazing because, you know, we so sold out for them. But if you that sold out for them, when was the last time you told somebody in your house? Yeah, I, I, we ain't even get to the job. We, we, ain't, we ain't get to the street. I'm talking about your house. Okay, I'll bring a little closer to home. Your family. Because, you know, you know people in your house I know is saved but I'm talking about the people attached to you in your home when was the last time we shared Jesus with them all right I'm, I know I'm in trouble right? God has got work for us to do and too many of us are concerned with the facts surrounding the issues and not with, all right, God, now how do we resolve the issue? How do we move forward from the issue? How do we gain what it is that you desire for us to know from this issue so that we can live better as a result of this issue? I wish I had somebody. Everybody standing. Can I, can, I, can I put the cookies on the table, y'all? Can I, please? All right. We don't have time for silly nonsense. We don't have time for all this gossiping and backbiting. And he say, she say. Man, we don't have time for this foolishness. We have to get to work. Are y'all, y'all? We, we got to work. We got to work. We, we have to work. I don't know. I'm, I'm not Reverend, you got to work. <laughs> Amen. I mean, if Jesus could say, we must work. Certainly, what's wrong with a, a mere individual like me saying, hey, we. Notice I didn't say you. We. We must work. Y'all with me? Can I tell you what we're fighting against? We're fighting against a culture that is anti-Christ. Anti-church. Have y'all heard this? I'm spiritual, but I'm not religious. I believe God in God, but I don't believe in the religious organization of the church. Well, then you don't believe in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said upon this rock I'll build my church I wish I had somebody and the gates of hell shall not prevail but it seems like hell is prevailing that's why we've got work to do we have to shift the culture are y'all with me here yeah that, that's that's why that's why people are are kind of stepping away from church and not being drawn to church. We have work to do. Let me tell you the work that we have to do. We have the work of allowing the Holy Spirit to help us reconstruct what we have deemed as church. Because all we think church is, is to get up, put our nice clothes on, come in the building, sit in our same seat every Sunday, Listen, enjoy, be entertained, go home, kick your feet up, and do business as usual. And we got to reconstruct that whole thought process. I, I was, that's, that's, why, that's why I love to teach. I do. 
because, because I believe that it is the teaching and the studying that is going to help to reconstruct uh, what has been deconstructed. <sighs> Hear me today. And I'm not knocking anybody. I'm not. I'm not talking about nobody. You know what I mean? And what you do, I'm just talking about what the Lord desires for us to do. All right. God has work for us to do. Amen. And can I just put this out there one, one last thing and I'm done. And it doesn't matter how old or how young you are. God got work for all of us. All of us to do. Your, your sphere of influence is different than mine. Are, are, am I talking all right? The people you know, not, they're not the people I know. But if we're all preaching and teaching and speaking and living the life that God desires for us to live, it won't be long until we'll experience exponential growth like Jesus taught his disciples. You ever wonder how Jesus could pour into 12 people and 12 people turn the world upside down? It's, it's no secret formula. No, he just, he just mentored them instilled in them, watch this, taught them. You know how many times Jesus spoke a parable or spoke a lesson? And then if you keep reading, it says, and then he took his disciples aside to explain it to them. Y'all hear, I'm telling y'all. We, we've got to, I'm sorry, y'all, forgive me. Um, God has work, so much work for us to do. And, um, and, and when I walk around, when I go to, to, downtown or city hall and I go to schools and see all that's going on I'm saying Lord we've got a lot of work a lot of work to do but the good thing is that God always empowers us prepares us for the work that he has can I tell y'all something God always gives the provision for the vision even before we see it because if we see it, then, then we think, you know, oh, we got this. But the reality is that God needs us to walk by faith and not by sight. There may be somebody here under the sound of my voice. I'm sorry. I can. Unsaved or unchurched or unsure. Um, you can respond today to the word of God, not my word about his word, but simply his word. And give your life to Christ. Or if you're not a member of any church, you can, if the Lord is leading you, you can come and be a part of this church here in the township of Scotch Plains, New Jersey. Is there one today, the Bible says, the day you hear my voice, harden not your, your heart. Is there one? Is there one? Is there one? Look at God, amen, amen, is there? Awesome God, awesome God. Is there another? Amen, look at God, amen, hallelujah. Is there another? The Bible says, the day you hear my voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I be honest with y'all? I still believe that people want to be in church. I just think that they want to be in a real church. You know, so, so many places, uh, you know, people got on these airs. Got pastors that think that they are CEOs of Fortune 500 companies, and you can't, you can't approach them, you can't touch them, you can't talk to them, you can't do nothing. Amen. People, people who are so so heavenly minded, they ain't no earthly good. Can I tell y'all? Jesus was among the people. Are y'all with me here? I love it when I'm among the people, and then folks say, "You the pastor." I sure is. <laughs> amen, amen. Is there, is there another? We'll wait for you. Is there another? God, we thank you. God, there's none like you. You're awesome. Mighty God, we thank you. Thank you for those that came today in whatever capacity they came. We pray even now, Lord, if there's anyone else here in the valley of indecision, prick their heart, God, even the more. 
cause them to cry out, I yield, I yield, what must I do? And then God put us in a position to be able to receive who you send so that we could be a part of their journey to grow. That we might all do the work that you have assigned our hands to do. Thank you for what you have done. Thank you for what you continue to do and how you continue to bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say amen. Amen. Put your hands together and give God some praise in this place. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of God. Amen. Amen. Are there, any, are, are there any folks here that joined the church, went through the new members class, but did not or have yet to receive the right hand of fellowship? Are there any? Amen. We want to extend the right hand of fellowship. Amen. Amen. Somebody said, somebody said, hey, pastor. Hey, hey, pastor. You know in the traditional church, you get a right hand of fellowship on first Sunday. I said, well, what happened if we don't make it the first Sunday? I was going to ask somebody, why well, put off for tomorrow what you could do today? What, 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 did, what did that Ethiopian eunuch tell Philip? It's water right there, right? What's to stop us from getting on in there and me being baptized? We thank God for your presence. We thank God for allowing the Lord to bring you back. Amen. Where you can be a, a member that will work and be a part of ministry here. We thank God for your presence and your impact and what the Lord is going to do while you're here. Um, on behalf of myself and the entire church, our leadership and everyone present and those that may be online, we welcome you to St. John's. Amen. We thank God for you and thank God for allowing the Lord to lead you back home. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. We love you. Amen. Come on, put your hands together and give God some praise. Amen. Pastor, why you don't let everybody shake their hands? You know the deacons want to shake their hands. Amen. Y'all remember we used to line up around the church and everybody come around and shake everybody's hand. And then that'd be the only time you shook their hand or spoke to them. Y'all pray for me, amen. I'm, I'm just crazy enough to know that the Lord led me here. Because <laughs> y'all probably didn't know how crazy I was, amen, when y'all said, yes, let's get Master Wallace. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, but thank God, thank God for St. John. I love St. John's, y'all. Amen, I love St. John's, amen, I do. I do. Amen, thank God. Amen. It's all uh, communion time. Amen. Is the has everyone been served that desires to be served? Has everyone been served? If you have not been served, please raise your hand. We'll make sure that you receive. Amen. I see one hand, two hands, three hands. Amen. Amen. I think I told y'all last first Sunday. There's this preacher that's in the media running around telling everybody that this ain't this isn't real communion. <sighs> it's not this, this is not real communion, he says. He says, first of all, we're doing it wrong because we're supposed to do it at night. So that's when Jesus did it. That's number one. Number two. He tell us that we ain't supposed to be using wafers. We supposed to have unleavened bread. Thank you. Number three, we ain't supposed to be using grape juice. We supposed to be using wine. And I wanted to say to him, well, how you know what kind of wine they use? <laughs> Then we might end up getting the wrong wine. 
Somebody might want Manischewitz. I'm sorry. Somebody else want a good Merlot. I thought we got to be careful because it, it talks about this is symbolic. A symbol. Are y'all with me here? Something that represents something that is greater than itself. So although this is not the real body of Jesus, it represents his body. You gotta be careful with that too. We got folks that believe in transubstantiation, which means that this becomes the actual body of Jesus. This becomes the actual blood. Uh, how? I'm sorry. I think teaching is everything. Study. That's why the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God. A work with the need not be ashamed, rightly divide the word of truth. On that night, Jesus took bread. And after he blessed the bread, he broke it and said, This is my body, broken for many. Take it, eat all of it. same manner he took the wine and after he blessed it he said this is my blood shed for many take it drink ye all in the name of the father the son and the holy ghost in jesus name amen the bible says that they went out into the mount of olives singing a hymn and we don't know what hymn they sung amen what song is that Nothing but the blood. Amen. We don't know what hymn they sung. But what we do know is that it was nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Stand on your feet if you don't mind and let's sing that together. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen, my brothers and sisters, as we prepare to leave from this place, but never from God's presence, it's offering time, it's time to give, amen. There are ways of giving electronically on the screens above. If you desire to give in that manner, you can certainly use any of those electronic ways to give. If you're here today and you desire to give a tangible gift while you're here at church, there will be trustees at the doors to be able to receive your offering. Amen. Uh, we thank God for each and every one of you. We thank God for your presence. We thank God for what you have done and will continue to do. And God has work for us to do. God, we're grateful and thankful for this day. Thank you for how you blessed us. We pray that when we leave this place, we'll never leave your presence. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us now, henceforth, and forevermore. Let every heart say amen, amen, and thank God. Oh, oh.